what, 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 ladies, get yourself ready for all the baby oiled sexy man meat that's about to come your way. Skull Face, Skull Face, Skull Face Records Radio presents the All Male Review. Skull Face Records Radio presents the review. So, basically, what you're telling me is people send you albums and you review them. Hmm, that's an interesting concept. The, the review, review, Skull Face Records Radio. We are live in the studio, man. This is a special, exclusive um, <laughs> radio taping. We don't normally do this, Slim. Right? Um, this is our first time actually doing this tonight. Um, upon this, as I'm talking, there's not an intro to this, but I know my crew and I know my guys, so you guys probably just got listening to the intro that's brand spanking fucking new for what we're doing. Um, what's going on is we got this band, I Am An Alien who just released a, a an album that they have worked their fucking asses off for. And they have been promoting and hyping this album up for at least four, five, six months just under my attention. So who knows how long it's actually been going on. Ain't these boys from West Virginia? They sure are, man. And That's they seem like they're a pretty motivated and focused group of guys, man. So they, wanted, uh, they sent these tracks to some different people and asked uh, us to give a general opinion and, uh, you know, kind of critique it. So... Uh, um, you know, that's what we fucking do. We listen to underground music and we fucking check out tunes. We've all been doing it our whole life. Um, so as soon as we get back, man, we're going to have, you know, not only myself and DJ Slim, we have Austin Skeen in the studio. We have David Wright and we have Ryan Lochner up in this motherfucker, man. And we guys are going to all be listening to I'm an Alien. Um, this is our debut album. We'll let you guys know how to get in touch with this and how to get yourself a copy and all that good shit. We'll be right back. Skullface Records Radio. Hashing it out with your hosts, Jerry Hash and Caleb Thompson. What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? It's me, Jerry Hash. The most controversial show on the airway. Fab to a lot of midget porn, but I watch a lot of it. On Skullface Records Radio. Like, you get the custard, you get a milkshake. When I take four or five drinks of that shit, I want the brain freeze. You what know do you what mean, mean a custard? <laughs> and, but there you don't get that. Like, the shit never gets cold enough. <laughs> and it, it's even in the name cold. I think, yeah, I think you're going to the wrong culvers, dude. Which one do you go to? Maybe. I go to the Hamburg. Yeah, that's a nice one. Where? That's the one right next to the Myers. I'm not going across town. All right, so what do you guys think about this? <laughs> what do you guys think about Myers? Dude, ah uh, man, we uh-huh. just we just switched to Myers full time. Yeah, yeah. I love Myers. Once you go oh, to Myers, you never go back. Dude, it's great. That's the only thing I miss about Lexington. Rebecca and I we just went there, like just to like you know first foray to it, mm-hmm. and uh, we the whole time we were talking like man. The store looks so dated. It makes me think of like when I was a kid. I like you know? old school shit like that. And then we were looking around. And like, things are more expensive, you know. But then we leave and they're like, wow, the more expensive was worth the experience of going there. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it, it just feels nostalgic. So do you think uh, over uh, Target? You guys oh, yeah. Target people? Target dishes? You guys don't care about Target dishes? Target dishes? Uh huh. Like Target dishes. Like flatware. They're yeah, they're dishes. No. Oh, I know. Oh, it's all Walmart. Walmart. That's all I know. I am. Um, I've never bought dishes, ever. Yeah, I haven't either. Never. No. Nope. Dishes in my life is something that you either inherit or you don't have. Right. Someone gives them to you or you use yeah. plates. Yeah. Paper Absolutely. plates and plastic forks. Yes. Yeah. No, we have dishes. All but we, my life. We live off paper Well, plates. dude, we have really fancy dishes. Right. That are in like a cabinet <laughs> that we don't use. You just or, look at them. Yeah, they're just there. The good China. So yeah. even if we have no, no silverware or no plates, no cups. <laughs> We're not we using. We ain't using that shit. Fuck no. Did, we did the uh, did the bong make the move? What are you talking about? The brown bong at the house. Jeez. Was it in the it's China not a, It wasn't a bong. <laughs> if you guys don't know about this, this thing's been haunting me for. Um, <laughs> It's actually what the song Haunted Me is about by Swamped and Ashy. Just Are you kidding. serious? No, okay. just kidding. I, was I should. I need to write a song about this. I was hoping. So my, uh, my wife would go to Mexico every year with her family. And when they would go, she would pick up cool souvenirs, like cool glass pieces and, and different, um, like little turtles, little skulls, right. little badass shit. 
Well, she comes home this year and uh, this one year, and she's like, oh, "I got this. Uh, I got this little, you know, like um." I guess she thinks it's a, some kind of weird tobacco using uh, product or something, some kind of, you know, bowl or something, but it's not. <laughs> and first off, it's like a three and a half inch girthy penis. Okay. <laughs> balls and all. Glass piece, balls and all. But it's so, like, when you look at it, you know that whoever made it, that's probably his dick. <laughs> or one that he you know really admired. Absolutely. It's modeled off of his That's own. probably his dick. Because he's not going to model it off of somebody it. else's. He's selling it to these Americans as they come up. And, <laughs> and, and it's not anything that anybody can use. It's a fucking whistle. <laughs> it's a whistle. It's a whistle. <laughs> It's a whistle. A it's got a li- whistle. It's a whistle. It's got a little bitty square thing in the top and then the hose in the end. And you blow in it, which I haven't done, but of course it's hers, and she's had to show, and it's a fucking whistle. I, was, I need to see you use this. Well, no, I hide it. I hide it. I hide it. It was hidden. If you go around my house, or any house that we've lived in in the last four years, which we've moved almost every year, um, which we'll be staying in the house we're at now for a long time, <laughs> but I always hide it, and I'll put um, just balls, no shaft. Just the right. balls hanging somewhere <laughs> inconspicuously where you'd really have to look at it. But, you right, know, right now I have something else to do with your house. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where's Waldo? But it's some Mexican right. guy's balls. Where's Waldo? Now when I go over there, I'm going to be looking for the balls. Know, where's right? Baldo at? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're going to see the first time skating and David and Ryan all come over to the house. You're just going to see him looking up in the air. We're just looking like at the looking at corners. the ceiling, looking in the corners. Right. If you find it, you get like a Red Bull or something. <laughs> You win a drink or something like that. Thing is, you don't tell Brittany. So she's like, "What the fuck is wrong with?" No, she guys? knows. <laughs> she knows, dude. She knows. Rebecca and I do that with a garden. She now. knows my hatred. <laughs> but the thing is, like, you know, I move shit. I moved everything. Right. I seen those nuts hanging over top the little thing where they had been there for the last two years that we were at this house. And it was one of the last things, but I picked it up shaft and all and put it in a box. <laughs> and all. So it, it did make the move. Moved it on, man. <laughs> Two-handed. Yeah. The penis got shafted. <laughs> after, after the way your landlord done you, I'm, I'm surprised it didn't end up like standing up in the middle of the room. All right. <laughs> My whole thing, I was uh, to tell you how good of a person I am, even though this, these people have said I'm awful and I'm nasty and I'm a bad guy, <laughs> I could really be a bad guy if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. But the one thing I do regret is um, all of us hated these fucking horse. They had, they, first of all, I think they all fuck horses because they're obsessed <laughs> with horses, but there was horse everything around this motherfucker and there was wallpaper, whatever the fuck, not wallpaper, but what was it, border? There was border of horse shit every, like, not horse shit, but horses everywhere and I vowed before I left that I was going to draw dicks on every one of them but I just never <laughs> got around to it but when I, when we were packing stuff up at the end I was like man I really regret not drawing dicks all over that stuff fill your nights with horror and fright check out our shows toxic takes grave diggers radio or uh, occultists with Lord Thaddeus Era Not Normal, and more, exclusively here on Skullface Records Radio. So you guys might be wondering, um, this is a new thing that we're doing tonight. This is an exclusive. Um, what's going on is we are here to critique. Um, we're going to listen to an album that none of us has heard before. Um, it's by a band called I'm an Alien. Um, they're an awesome band from West Virginia. So Slim's, uh, you know, fucking rock hard because he loves everything West Virginia. By God, speaking of West tell Virginia. Em, tell them, tell them. We were talking food today. I tell them. I drove to Lexington. Uh-huh. <laughs> And I, so fucking excited. I partaked <laughs> in some Tudor's fucking biscuit world. Tudor's biscuits. And Best let me tell you Lexington. something, boys. When I pulled up, I thought, okay, this is a Tudor's biscuit world in Lexington. They probably changed the name of my biscuit to like a wildcat or a cardinal. Rex chat. That's what everything that it wrecks in Kentucky does. Is, right. You know, hey, let's center around the colleges. Uh-huh. Well, uh, when I pulled up... I normally get a biscuit called the Thundering Herd, uh-huh. and it's named after my favorite college team, and it's fucking delicious. It's hash brown, sausage, egg, cheese. 
Boom. And buttermilk biscuit. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking delicious. So. Does this come in sandwich or like a bowl? It, it's a sandwich. Mm. Like, uh, it's it's the all that shit how's is squished the in cooked? between. How, how's the egg cooked? Is the egg cooked like, uh, it's like black on sides? No. Kinda? No. Is, is it, it fried like egg it's or folded? folded? Oh, it's man. folded and yeah. folded fried. And where yeah. is where is this? Tudors. Tudors. I mean, where? Uh, it's it? uh, off of uh, New Circle Road. If you're coming from Cynthia, hit Station Russell Road. Cave, and then uh, take Russell Cave all the way to New Circle and make a left. I guess I know where. And I'm it's going. up about three quarters of a mile. Where Popeyes used to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, Slim's going once a week. We could all carpool. Oh yeah. Once Absolutely. a week, we should all go to Tudors. Oh yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Let me tell biscuit. you something, guys. When I pulled up, I thought, like I said, I thought. They might have renamed the biscuits or something, and I was going to have to look. When I pulled up, I was so happy that they still had West Virginia stuff on there. Well, you popped to it the was, lady that was taking your order, right? I did. She was like, when I pulled up to she the was speaker, probably happy. Uh, when I pulled up to the speaker, she's like, "Hi, welcome to Tudors. Can I take your order?" And I was like, "Welcome to Tudors. Can I, I take like, your order?" I was like, "I just want to say something real quick. I am so excited." And then she came back and she said, "Can you just not hide it?" Oh, and I said, "I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it." I was like, uh, "So anyway, give me two thundering herds." And she was like, two herds, anything else? And I'm like, no. And she said, $8 and some change. So I drove around to the window there. I was only two cars deep. There wasn't a big line like they said that has been uh -huh. for a while. Um, I was only two cars deep in the drive through And uh, when I got to the window, they gave me my herds and... I put it in my mouth, man. Uh, uh, giggity, giggity, goo, all right. Put it uh, in your mouth. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. I put it in my mouth, and it was like yeah. home, dude. It, it was a taste of home in Kentucky. I know how I that like, feels, though. But the, Hell yeah. I've almost uh, gotten numb to eating out uh, outside of Cynthiana. Like, there's so many different restaurants that I used to love to go to, but with all the bullshit that happened and being in the house, Skeen, you know, man, mm -hmm. I was in the house a lot. Months, in 2020 right. months yeah man where i i kind of forgot about going outside of and it, dude to me that's like a vacation like i said like if we could go outside of town and go into lexington and get some good fucking food and hang out to me i i used to go to peddlers malls and walk around or flea markets and Absolutely. walk around and none of that fucking shit's around man so it's weird any any time that man. i've said something about going to lexington and doing something you kind of perk up you're like oh really? yeah i'm like what? We well we went to survivors one time i missed your all survivors trip um me and Brittany got to go to survivors one time and we had a really good time what's survivors um, it's a karaoke survivors. bar karaoke bar, it's karaoke bar. Like it's fucking I don't great, know dude. what the hell you're talking about. Oh, really? It's near uh, the mall and uh, Lexington Green. 168 right Reynolds house. Road. <laughs> yeah. By my house. Survivors. 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 We could all meet there one night. We could do the best karaoke in Lexington. <laughs> Skullface would run that bitch. Yeah, man. We would get down. <laughs> and then crash That's one thing we home. excel at. Like, karaoke is just like a side gift. If you're a real musician, karaoke is like a side gift that's just easy. Mm -hmm. Like when that goes on, it's like night off. Why do I get to sing my favorite song? Okay. <laughs> this is easy as fuck. <laughs> you don't have to worry about playing it. You don't have to worry about none of that shit. Um, but man, we are here to review an album. So we might as well get started. Um, Slim, I don't know if you, do you have this first one uh, queued up? Yeah. Um, this is the first song off I'm an Alien album. This song is, is this actually the self-title? This is the name of the album too, right? Uh, well, this Glitch. one's just called glitch the name of the album but the is, name of the album is the year of the glitch the year of the glitch this is i am an alien this song is called glitch you guys are listening to it first on skull face records radio
myself No, not gonna rely on medications I don't need it now We've all got something waiting us down We've all got a problem So lay it down in prayer My mother before me, yeah So that was the first track. Yeah, man. It's called Glitch. That's bad to the bone. Um, I think it ended really strong. Yeah. Um, the guitar ship dude is raw. Dude, the the, 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 pro- nuts. the production's nasty. Um, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna to uh, rate everything. Fuck it, let's do a rating system. So as we go through, um, you know, one is a pile of shit, <laughs> and one usually gets turned off. You know, you usually don't listen to a one. If it makes it all the way through like it did, um, like I said, uh, you know, we were thinking about doing a couple minutes of a song and then stopping it. But I feel like if we did, we would have missed the end of that. Yeah. And that was awesome. Like the don't don't. Yeah. I think it was the best part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. It it was it was really thick at the end, man. Um, So I'm going to start with Ryan. You were right on the side. What's the scale? One is complete dog shit, and ten is something that would blow your mind that you think is radio ready and you'd go out and buy right now. No, I'll be grading this strictly on just if I heard it. Strictly your your, your, opi- your opinion your opinion on what you would think of that if you were looking uh, you know if you were a, if you wanted someone to critique your band honestly do it the same way to them. All right. That style. Straightforward. Uh-huh. Um, Straight up now, tell me. I definitely think uh, the rhythm and guitar section are, are rocking straight from the beginning. Uh-huh. They're, they're solid and strong. Um, the guitar is a shredder, definitely. Mm-hmm. That sounds great. Uh, I think the, the vocal work needs a little more projection, personally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, needs to really kind of really grab, bring it. grab in and bring it raw, you know what I'm saying? Really, uh-huh. really push it into it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Go for the grasp on it. Um, I think the transitions were, were nice. Um, and especially the transition at the end, it brought in the whole feel of the whole song and tried to step it up. Um, now, I'm, I'm harsh grader. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, me personally, I'm going to 
We'll say a six. Six. Yeah. Boom. That's a good score, I think. I'm going to go now to behind me. A DJ. He's been listening to music professionally and spinning them tables now for, what, 75 years? <laughs> Grandpa Slim. 117-year-old Slim. 13 before I started Skullface. <laughs> Ooh, that was your lucky number. That's right. right. That, that's, that tells you something right there. Ooh, we got Noah. Uh, we got Noah. Noah's uh, tuned in here. This is actually uh, Joe for President, who we do does a show here with Skullface. Mm-hmm. It's his grandson. Oh, wow. And he gave from home... He gave the band a seven. Oh wow! So mm. awesome. So Slim, what what are you, what are you giving them? I, I think I'm gonna go with uh, I, I'm I'm gonna stay about with Ryan uh-huh. on this. Uh-huh. I, I would give him a six. A six. Yeah. Um, like Ryan said, I, I think those vocals have got to be a little bit more projected. Uh-huh. Um, but the guitarmanship was great. Yeah. Um, you know, even the drummer with his double bass fills. Oh, he and, kicked ass at the end. Dude, that outro was nasty. Yeah, and then uh, and then the uh, I really liked the uh, the group effect there, where they're all like, "Yeah, yeah me too." Yeah. It was like Marilyn Manson. It kind of reminded me of. Uh, hey. It kind of reminded me. Of, remember, P-O-D. yeah, I yeah, give that, him. That's, that's uh, P-O-D. Is that P.O.D.? That's, that's yeah, you're. P-O-D. You, oh, okay. you so did you? So six, right? Yeah, so I would give him a six. Big six, dog. Um, I'm going to go to David Wright of the Wright Anxieties. Um, what did you think about it? You're actually, you're formally in some metal progressive type styles of bands too in your career, right? Right, right. So this is uh, probably right down your alley with a lot of bands you probably played with and listened to and that kind of shit. Right, yeah. Like I, I go with everybody, man. The vocals, uh-huh. they definitely need to be coming out a little more, a little more projection. Uh-huh. But the, the band themselves, they were great. Mm-hmm. You know, they all, they did a real good job of starting out. You know, they started out, they built up as they went on throughout the whole song and it, mm-hmm. it sounded great i, I kind of like the music a lot mm-hmm. but yeah i go with everybody else on the on the vocals and i give them a solid six 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 so far i'm an alien um let's see what david said here um i'll give you the choice austin you can go next or you can make me go I'll go next. All right, what do you I'll think, tr- man? I'll try not to be the Simon Cowell of this panel. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here we nah, go. Skullface <laughs> producer, baby, you gotta man. you gotta bring it. I mean, I liked it. You know, it was good effort. Like everybody else said, I think the, I think the guitar was phenomenal. The, the solo was killer. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as production goes, I feel like the vocals don't really quite sit in the mix. You know, it sounded more like a karaoke type feel. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and you guys have already said, you know, project more a little with the vocals. Um, but yeah, I think it was solid. I give it, I give it a six. Okay. Um, I think they could simply put some kind of effect on his voice. Yeah, to I bring feel, it up. That's all they needed. It was all I was missing. I, if if you would have gave it any kind of ominous behind like, it, I feel like it's kind of set dry. I feel like it almost sounded like it was recorded, like nothing against what they how they recorded it, and they might have recorded it awesome, but it sounded like the whole thing was finished, and then they did a track by itself with everything else over here, and then did the vocals over it. Exactly, yeah. But I don't know. Um, I thought it was a good song. For sure. I think it was written well. I think the outro went out with a bang. Um, I giggled a little bit when he said fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys notice that? Yeah. That was kind of giggly to me. <laughs> um, man, I, I don't give it a six, man. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go one under, man. I'm gonna give it right at average. And five's not a bad score to me. Um five is is, is right there where you need to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um I was I was gonna say five, but the the solo brought it up one point. I listen to a lot of music. You just made the guitar player's head about that much. Well I just yeah. listen, I just listen to a whole lot of music and I think before you get over average to what I'm listening to, everything needs to be done right. For sure. And I don't I think get that. I don't think that was I don't uh, to me the vocals if everybody here is saying that there's there needs to be something on it. Um but like, it's an awesome song. Um I'm gonna give it a five. Let's go to. We're gonna go to track two. Do you want to announce this one, DJ Slim? Oh, we get more than one. <laughs> sure. Oh, uh, this shit. one's called. Here we go. This one is called the definition of me and you. Interesting title. Mm-hmm. I like the title. I do too. Let's go. Let's hear this one. Yeah. 
perfect only the creator it's just first mm-hmm. um you know power metal is not really my thing anyways yeah um but his vocals sounded a lot better there too um they still didn't sit well in the mix i don't think yeah. that's that's but the, the technique smart. though the technique it, to me it sounded a lot like i could hear a lot of influence um from spencer zatello from periphery i don't know if you guys know them but i'm sure this this dude does um and also like vibrato, vibrato from like jonathan davis of corn See, I was thinking melody like too. Lincoln Park a little bit. Too. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like the, the Chester. It brought that Chester's timbre. Yeah, type, yeah, yeah. The 90s, early 2000s. But also, it kind of sounds like, like overall, just the whole song reminds me of failure. Mm-hmm. You guys know them? Yeah. yeah, it was a mood. It was, a, it was a definite mood. Um, the last thing I'll have to say is, I think the drums are programmed. Mm-hmm. But if they're not, that's a compliment to the drummer because mm-hmm. they sounded great. Mm-hmm. Very, very good feels in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd give that one a seven. Boom. That's a nice score. David Wright, what do you think? Oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. We bumped bellies on that one. No, you <laughs> my dick area. That was dick area. I was trying to be kid friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing kid friendly about my dick area. Man, I'm, I'm a bass player. <laughs> So I, I really like I, I really dig the beginning of that song. It was nice. Space the bass was awesome. heavy. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Um, like Skeen said, the vocals just don't mm-hmm. I, don't take us the wrong way. And if I offend offend little buddy, I'm sorry. But I feel like they had no no heart. Like it was like he wasn't. There was no. You didn't get me in the feels, man. Uh huh. 
It's almost like he's trying too hard. I don't think he wasn't trying. I think he wasn't trying hard enough. That, yeah, maybe. That's my criticism. Is let's 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 give Ron the mic here. This mm-hmm. is the, okay. This is this is the one criticism I have of it, and I don't know this. And this is just directly from my perspective, from what I hear. It sounds like he's going for a specific type of vocals. Right. Like he hears a certain vocalist, and he's like, well, I, I, I really like hear the sound. Chester thing now that you say that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like he hears a certain like 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 I personally kind of hear him trying to sound like you know Lincoln Park or someone like that. And I feel like if he was able to kind of shed that trying to sound like someone else and just put his own be you whatever it is. Right throw it in there and really just sink into it yeah I think it would make the song elevate it to a point to where like from what it sounds like what they're going for is kind of that kind of like the rock of like the kind of the 2000 like the post grunge post grunge yeah yeah, exactly and trying trying to soak into that if you're going to do it soak into it in my opinion don't just you know make it your own you can take you know if you hear my stuff you can take any type of music and still try to take your own to it and try that that's the only thing I would give a criticism of. That's me. I kind of resonate with that too, because I mean, like, it, I, I find myself doing it a lot, with, especially with like guitar riffs and shit. Yeah. Um, I I will like I'll write a riff and I'll think, fuck, that sounds just like this song, you know? Yeah. It's right. kind of hard to break free from that. Oh yeah. Man, I, I what I do, man, is like, first off, I try. I I, I realize that I I couldn't stick to one genre, so I I play a bunch of different shit. Yeah, right. And when I'm playing that type of genre, I don't listen to it. Right. You know. Right. Like, if I want to kick, like, if we're doing next to nothing stuff, I try to stay away from any kind of punk, heavy, rock, anything. Like, I'd rather listen to hip-hop and, like, gospel music for five days because I feel like I'll subliminally steal something by not even fucking knowing Absolutely. because that's already in my fucking head because I've been listening to it all night. That's the hard like, part of being the cover yeah. king. And then, and then, right. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, we're playing something that's on Pearl Jam Versus. Absolutely. Like Ryan said, man, it's it, it took tr- – stop trying to sound like your favorite rock star. Try mm-hmm. to sound like your favorite singer and try to try to be you yeah absolutely Before you'll be happy that's the biggest deal that is right. man that's a cool thing man and that's what i like about all of us man it's weird it's weird how uh especially with the band that we got going on how we <laughs> mesh all of our shit together you know what i'm saying but that's something special it's something special that like almost all the musicians got that come in the studio even if they've been in and not been and, and left and won't ever be back while they were here things meshed really really fucking cool like regardless it's pretty neat shit um but all right david give me a score on these guys man on that song i give it i give that one a solid a solid four four boom ryan i'm over here david four uh-huh yeah. no. slim i'll give it a five I'm kind of surprised I liked that more than you guys did. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's fair. Different perspectives. It's fair. Um, That's the whole reason I wanted us all to sit down and do this when Nick Mm -hmm. mentioned it, because I knew that we would all have different perspectives on this. Um, Man, uh, to me, it was boring. It just kind of bored me a little bit. Like if 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 I was listening to uh, satellite radio and I was changing the stations and I was driving to Florida, I probably would have switched. And I came up onto that. It didn't grab my attention. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not to say that the production wasn't awesome. The the everything was cool about it. Everything was solid as fuck. It was it was a nasty nasty production absolutely. of a song. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm with you guys, man, on the lower side and giving that one about a four as well. I think we're only going to do two songs today on this I'm an Alien, and we'll bring it back because I think this is something cool that we can do. But I think what we need to do, guys, when we come back from a break is let's review some other music. Yeah, let's do that. Let's I'm, do it. I'm wearing a Ride Anxiety shirt, and I believe they released a song. One that Ryan hasn't heard yet. Yeah. Ryan hasn't right. even heard this That's shit. That's right. Um, so it's going to be a debut for him. Um, so when we get back, we're actually going to critique the right anxiety while he's live in the studio so we can give him shit and he has to look in our eyes and smell it. <laughs> You're going to give me shit, too, because I'm on there. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, we got the producer and the fucking lead man, drummer. Skeen plays everything for everybody. We just come in, with a, we come in with an idea. <laughs> um, I need to change my moniker to Skeen the Session Man. The session Skeen, baby. Session Man MD. Um, we'll be right Right back, guys. What are we calling this bitch? Uh, Skullface Records Review. Right. There you go. Well, Skullface Records 
other record review or something. <laughs> nah. Skullface Records Review. I like it. Got a ring to it, Donna. Yeah. Yeah. I want to put a ring on it. <laughs> put a right. ring on it. Hey, um, can you pull up the new track by them or do you have to download it or I, something? It's, it's in your downloads already. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what we're doing, guys. It's already there. All right. I so, had it ready. So what's the title of this song, David? Tell us a little bit of background about this song we're about to hear. Man, I guess I'm, we're, we're going to sit on title and call it Can't Be Saved. Can't I mean, we, we Be can, Saved. We can still change it. We can still change uh, it. Yeah. They might still have a working title. Saved? Uh, Do you like the name Saved? Just let's, Saved? Let's go ahead and say Working Title until the working video Working Title. Out. Right, there you go. We'll, we'll drop the video and the name together. How about uh -huh. that? There you go. Ooh. Oh. Change the whole thing. Call it Nick. <laughs> Man, this <laughs> <right>? Nicopolis part two. <laughs> this, this song's probably it's probably about thirteen years old. Oh wow, wow. Honestly, I mean, because it, it, well, may, maybe a little younger than that. When I actually, I, I played played bass most of my life, and I had an acoustic. Bought an, or my wife at the time bought me an acoustic, and we uh, lived in a little place in were sales, and I was starting to write music, and it was the first song I wrote with that guitar. Oh, cool. Mm. And with a Fender. With a Fender, with a Fender acoustic, right? No, it wasn't that strat. Oh, okay. it, it was a little Fender acoustic, and uh, this is what it morphed into really over the over the years, you know. And this is what it's become. Oh, that's awesome. What's it about? Do you care to talk about? Man, at that time, I probably wasn't in the best time in life, really. Uh -huh. Mine wasn't in the best place, and you know, your mind nine goes to dark spots sometimes. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a daily. Big, it's it right. It's a, it's a deep song. It's, it's one that. I emailed my mother and she called me to make sure I was still here, you know? Oh, wow. So. And we know how much your mom gives a shit about you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. That's bro, cool. I've, I've been there. <laughs> I, I've been in that dark place where right. you're just like, man, I, I can't. I can't come out of it. I'm done, right? It's like I can't be I can't be saved. Right. I right. think I think if you haven't been in that spot, you don't get along with any of us. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why we're songwriters. Right. But you get good music out of it. You do. Absolutely. Oh yeah. It all comes from the dark side and we right. ain't talking about our butt hoes. <laughs> <laughs> you got that song queued up? Yeah. Let's rock and roll, dude. This is the Ride Anxiety's newest single. It don't have a name, so I can call it whatever I want to. I'm gonna call it saved. So whatever, it's awesome. Maybe I'll let you know afterwards. David, as 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 he's getting ready to come on, he's leaving the room because he knows it sucks. <laughs> he knows deep down inside, everybody's gonna be, it just sucks, man. And I guess if the uh, I'm an alien dudes hear this, they can critique us, back, critique us back. Yeah, if you guys are listening, if you guys want to critique this song out here, man, in Radio Land, let us know. Oh, we would appreciate cool. y'all cool, helping it? hand. I love constructive criticism. Yeah, the best. Cody Hunt gave, uh, I believe the last song that we listened to, he gave that a five. Actually, the first song we listened to, he gave it a five. Cool.
one's got me. Almost. <laughs> Almost, man. Because I've been cry? there. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I've been to that dark place. Absolutely. And it's like, I can I can hear the pain and, and, and the misery that you go through when you're in that dark place. Absolutely, man. You know? And I, I it almost got me. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> hey, there we go. Uh, but I, I learned a little trick today that I didn't know that existed. If you're ever about to cry, stick a thumbtack in your shoe <laughs> and uh, jam your toe in it if you're about to cry. It'll take your mind off crying. It will, yeah. I thought you did pass a lie detector test, too. <laughs> I didn't pass a lie detector, but I did pass a uh, parental detector test. <laughs> right. You were the daddy. You failed. I was the daddy. <laughs> you know, I just thought of something. What's that? I think it'd be really cool to end that song with like the sound of like stopping a tape player. Absolutely. There's that there's a static in there. Mm-hmm. I got yeah. a tape player back there we can yeah. stop. We just yeah. put a mic Absolutely, to it. Absolutely, man. That's all we got to do. <laughs> um, so here we go, guys. Um, we're going to be rating this one. Um, we got to remember to be honest just because our balls are hard because because this was our label. <laughs> that, this was our boy. That, this that was, sounds like uh, an illness. <laughs> Your balls are hard. Yeah. Um, our balls stay hard around here. <laughs> um, be honest. I can't make you go first. Who should I, I make go, go first? Go on first. <laughs> you want me to go? Yeah. No, I'll I was, go first. I was, I was kidding. I can, You're I giving it right 11. now, real quick and simple. You're giving it 11. 11 out of 10. Right. Yeah. I mean, 11. best fucking vocals I've um, heard. <laughs> I mean, God damn it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Slim, go first. All right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest, man. You almost cried. Bro. I almost, it, it almost got me because like I said, I've been in that spot, you know, and like Dave said, you know, his mom called him like, are you still here? <laughs> like, like, you know, cause she can hear, you can hear the darkness in that. You can hear <laughs> the pain, the misery. Darkness, him presenting me. <laughs> what did I see? I will give it, and this is unbiased. Unbiased. Okay. A nine. Yes. Damn. Thank you, Slim. Thank. You. Absolutely. And while that is greatly appreciated, who's going to beat this? These I, Jesus. A I, nine. I, 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 I would have given it a ten. That's what, that's what I'm gonna ask. But yeah. you know, the here's the thing. You need the tape stop it's, at the end. What, right. what, what got me? It's Skullface number one. Okay. Everything we do is fucking awesome. Okay. We are so, the elite. Right. We we're. I mean, my God, we're awesome and geniuses. The, it, the, I would have gave it a 10, but that would have been like, oh, that's slim. That's so skull face, you know, but um, even though it is a skull face song, um, I, I'm going to give it a solid nine because it got me right in the feels. So what he's really saying is off the record, it's a 10. Yeah, <laughs> off the record, it is so, a 10. In the back room, it's a 10. I'm yeah. going to ask you the hard oh, yeah. question. Yeah. If you had to improve one thing, what would it be? Yes. Oh. Got to know that one. Man. More harmony. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a harmony singer, so I, I would have, uh, uh, you know, when uh, when you do the take it all away, like, because right. uh, that is that is referenced in that. Maybe that could be the name of the song. <laughs> Slim just wants to do backups. But, <laughs> but you know, no, I, I'm a harmony singer. I love harmony. I think harmony really drives it home. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, when Take It All Away hit, even though it sounds great in the final mix, I think if you'd have had like a second or a third behind you right. doing the Take It All, you know, you were at Take It All Away. Right. And maybe if if you'd have had a Take It All Away, right. you know, maybe a third, maybe a fourth, song, you know, just somewhere in there, just a little bit more harmony. That's the only. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And we were going to do that, actually. Yeah. But when I finally got to mixing it, mm-hmm. I thought just like Dave by himself, mm-hmm. it made it sound just more like it, mm-hmm. it real, does. You know, it does. It really it does. Really, it really makes you zero in on him. Yeah. Yeah. And what he went through. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan. I totally agree with that, though. What do you think? Well, I was 100% like, because I've heard the song, so definitely from the production. First time ever, too, for you. Yeah. The production level, dude. 
sound is fucking awesome. Right? Yeah, sound is Skull great. Face Records Radio. And, uh, like, all, like the be- biggest thing I'd say is like, it's almost like, dude, when I shut my eyes and listen to it, like, I could hear it. Not, I give you major credit for the transition of it's still the same feel to the song, but it's still taking you through a journey where you're t- jumping up through certain peaks and valleys of it. Right. To where. It builds you up, and then especially when you hit that chorus, and then also when all your drums and all your electronics kick in, it's it's a smooth, it's not just rock, it's a smooth transition in there. Right, right. You can almost hear <clears throat> being played at like an arena, is what I would almost say. Like, I like literally at like, you know, one of those, like when you mm-hmm. hold the lighter and all that. <laughs> oh, yeah, up, right? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, man. Saying. That's what it has that feel. Awesome. Appreciate it, brother. Dude, Very much. <clears throat> number. Straightforward, like it's hard to critique your friends. It's so it hard. is. It's so hard because I'll be honest with you, dude. I wouldn't like with anything of mine. I don't ever give my, like I probably don't ever give myself over a six or a seven on anything. Right. Just because I know how the like I give a solid eight. That's me. Oh yeah, oh, man. appreciate it. So solid eight. That's huge, dude. It's you have like you have a nine and an eight what the fuck's your going on you're crushing into it you know what I'm saying? Right. You hear your, i can hear your mind in that you know what i'm saying right so i love i love that but it's it's smooth it has it gives it carries it has the feel and i mean dude that's what you want a song to do is to you know right so absolutely carry you. you don't want to just be thrown right at it sometimes right it's a journey it's it's what's fun about it so yeah dude i love it right. are you judging Thanks, this or do you want me to judge so, it uh, I'm just gonna say that that solo, uh, it, it just it sounds like that yeah. guitar player is just really sexy. Man, I've been playing, <laughs> I've been playing with that dude since like February. She's all right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did he say she's all right? <laughs> His she's all right. <laughs> right. There's a there's a thing going around here, skiing and me and you dude, so I can talk about it. We're dudes. Um, Last time I checked. A couple times. He fell down upstairs. I did. At On the, the balcony. Rolls. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yes. You fucking broke your ass. Yeah. <laughs> but you know who else did? Yes, I do. My wife. <laughs> and her pink panties are now <laughs> legendary <laughs> <laughs> around Skullface Records. Oh. <laughs> are they now? Damn, I've, I missed I've, it. I've got to have her tune in for this now. She'll blush on that, probably. Right? <laughs> That's hilarious. You'll put on blast. Okay, so it's on me, right? Um, me, I think, uh, you know, I've, I've, I heard it raw. What? 14 to 20 days ago, I guess. Right. And you wanted to record it forever ago. Yeah. This one. And you guys did a couple songs in between, all that cool shit. Um... You actually uh, were playing the version I heard first time. Probably. Cause, yeah, because Dave sent me a video of you two playing it. That's hilarious. And I was like, holy shit, we're recording that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. He must have not liked the way I sung it because he didn't have me on the vocals either, Slim. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> so that might uh, that might affect the score. Um, How does he really feel? Uh, right? Did I not? I think I did say when we were playing it there, it's like, man, you're going to do those vocals with me. You were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I got busy. I got in. busy. And then he goes home. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I was busy. He was, was kind of planning a wedding and moving. And hey, yeah. wait, though. I'm getting back in my flow, though, guys. I, I, don't like I got, I'm, back, I'm, back, I'm almost back 100%. I'm back like 80%. Here soon, man. I'll be here until Lee hours again every day. Um, I think you Honest have better pain. songs, right? Okay. Like I do. I, I, I think I think you have better songs. I think you have songs that, um, just because of the way that you had to do the production, it didn't like they're already good songs. But right. you know the difference, right? You know you can fucking blow them the fuck up and make them sound like what we just heard, right? Absolutely. Um, man. The song um, when when it kicks in and and the uh, you know the jaguar starts hitting and stuff, man, it um, it gives it more power the second time you hear it. Right. The first time you hear it, it's like it's kind of like it's moving on you, and it's the first time you've learned the track or whatever. So it's right. just like a little ride you ain't did before. Right. Um, the second time you hear it, you're waiting on it, and you're kind of really paying attention to it to see how the transitions are and how it builds and how it builds because it really builds up pretty, 
pretty slick into those solos and shit. Right. Um, man, it's a really, really fucking. Um, I didn't think it would become that when we were doing it. When <laughs> Neither <you heard>. did I. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I had no fucking. I had no I fucking clue. I had no fucking. Yeah, I had no fucking clue. Um, fuck, man. Given. Given the high, high, high scores leaves room for almost nothing. And I feel like you have room for more shit. But I'm also got to remember that I'm not judging your other shit. I'm judging what I just heard. Um, I wish I could do like a point five or something. I, I'm, I think I'm going to do a point five. I'm going to give you a seven point five. What, okay. would you, what would you change? That's what I say. What would you well, now? Same question to you. What would yeah. you improve? on this song? What would I change? Yeah, just on this song. We're judging this song. What would I do on this? On this song, if there's one thing you could improve, on. I would say the exact same thing that we were kind of saying about some of that. I'm an alien man. I would say when you sing it, get fucking hyper and get some real fucking ass behind yourself. Maybe right. we, maybe we can do it with. with uh, you let me tell you what I told Slim the other day. What's you that? sang with more passion the first two times that I seen you here, because I think like now we're thinking about doing more music and then you were just thinking about doing your thing and when you were doing right. your thing the first couple of times I heard you you were just fucking belting right and I don't think you've really got hyper before you've sang yet you've just been singing your stuff I get that does that make sense absolutely do you think that is that true Maybe, I, don't, I don't know, maybe. Because like I said, I, I, maybe you're, you're, consciously, well, like, you're, no, you're a Red Bull drinker you know I mean? like me. Right. So maybe what you need to do is you need to fucking get your Red Bull. You got to get from the back porch. You <laughs> fu- you've seen me do vocals. Oh, Slim's seen me do vocals. Yeah. Dude, I fucking get into it. Absolutely. Right, absolutely. That ready for feeling, a fight. And then I only have that one or two times to go because I'm ex- exerting. Right, absolutely. I think and maybe, maybe we could do what we did for Chris and just like, you know, set to the mood for you. Turn the lights off, get some candles going. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, we, we I'm not that. joking, dude. I'm, it, 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 it adds to it, I like the it, hot man. maple toddy candle. That's what I want to do, <laughs> man. I, dude, I'm, I might be pampered. I might be spoiled. Um, but I recorded in some shitty places and small bedrooms you know up for fucking years and years and years and years and the fact that i have the ability to set a mood yeah fuck i'm gonna do it absolutely i haven't made it this far to not set that fucking mood if i can set a fucking mood and and that's what i think i think that's the only thing that needs to be different about probably all of us like everybody that's recording in here yeah we need to get past the nerves because we're starting to fucking do it a lot and now we can get in and start having some real fun with it by getting in here and getting loose and getting hyper and yelling and getting fucking our adrenaline going when we're making the music so it gives us that extra fucking pump i think a lot of our problem is like we get just so anxious to hear the final product we kind of rush through it yep we do Yeah. yeah Right. Oh, yeah. I, I will tell you that a perfect example Absolutely. of what Nick is talking about. Okay, when Ryan first started coming in here, his his nerves. Absolutely, I I'm gonna tell you what. Sin City Live. <laughs> I did. This dude brought it, right? And he knocked it out of the park. Man. And he was in it and just getting it. And right. everybody that came up to the mic, including you, Dave, mm-hmm. you guys were just. You guys were getting it. And it's like, I think when we record, you know, the song becomes stale to us at I some point. We're have, excited when we write it. You the adrenaline as you do when you're playing it live. Right. Yeah. right. So you got to you, you get, got that, to get that adrenaline back. going. Well, yeah. The last time I came up in the last recording session I did, mm-hmm. the first song I did, like, I remember the first song I did, I went into it and we first started up and we're doing the rough track. And I went into it, and I'm just thinking, okay, it's the rough track, so I'm just going to you know, sing over, not thinking too much into it. And I think I was into it for maybe a minute, and you were like, oh, called it off, you know, you stopped it up. And I remember you looked at me, and you are like, hey, fucking put some ass into it. <laughs> Bring it. It's exactly what you said. You're like, and this, but the funny yeah, thing is, is, is it, it. It, was, it was exactly what I needed, because I got had that challenge, and exactly with, you know, how much I respect what you say, and like yeah. you saying it to me, immediately I was like, done let's oh, yeah. let's, let's do it and that second is take was just like have oh, the best sound bring it out if i want if i hear something that if i and then because like i said i heard you 
when I heard you at the like he said, dude. Yeah. I was like, this motherfucker's got it. But I knew you had it from the first time we we were started playing. Yeah. And I know there's an intensity because I've heard it when we were singing the you know yeah. songs together that we got. Absolutely. So like I get how much juice you got. Yeah. Just like I said with him, right. and like I said, I wasn't here to see him record the vocals. So I don't know really what was going on or how the mood was, but you got to full yeah because you got a really good voice David you got a pretty voice you do um, I love your voice on the Psychotic Marvel song because I think I've probably heard that one now more than any of your other songs and it's just a really a really a fucking delight to have you fucking singing songs with us here in the studio man and making all these fucking hits and shit dude um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Skullface Records Review um, it's been a fun first uh, episode of this man right um, we listened to three decent fucking cool badass songs man I think today the winner though is the Ride Anxiety man <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thanks, um, thanks. We want to thank I'm an Alien, though, for sending in their stuff, dude. Their fucking shit rocks. Um, we're going to make sure that when we put this show out, we'll have a link that anybody that wants to um, further get to know that band or listen to any other tracks, we will be reviewing the other songs as well um, on the show at a later date. Um, I want to thank Ryan the Lion. I want to thank David Wright. I want to thank Austin Skane. I want to thank DJ Slim. Thank you, buddy. And thank all you guys that's tuned in. Thanks for everybody that listens and all that shit. Hey, Slim. Yo. Tell them about the social media. You can find us on social media. Skullface Records Radio on the Instagrams. Uh, Skullface Records Radio on the Facebooks. Uh, or you can subscribe on YouTube. YouTube.com slash C slash Skullface Records. And Spotify and Podcasts. Spotify and, Podcasts, baby, baby. Yep, you can find us on Spotify Podcasts now. Um, and I just sent the submission off yesterday. I don't know how long it's going to take with Rona and all that crap going on. Uh-huh. But uh, we may be on iHeart Podcast. Hey, guys, real quick, man, right before we leave out, <laughs> right before we leave out, we got Dan Bowen tuning in real quick. <laughs> he, said, he said he agrees with the I agree with the nerves, brother. He's the same thing, man. Sometimes you got to get the nerves in and get the nerves out you know and that goes with any kind of musician you know so that's a lesson learned here on skull face Red-